And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a special hello goes out to the director of media for the Boston Bruins alumni, Mr. Mark Boyan. I see you, Marky. Welcome to the Pro Hockey Alumni Podcast, the home of behind-the-scenes interviews, stories, and memories that celebrate the heritage of the great game of hockey. The Pro Hockey Alumni Podcast is hosted by Mark Willand. Episode 18 of the Pro Hockey Alumni Podcast is a tribute to U.S. hockey legend Keith Huffer Christensen, who died on November 5th, 2018, at the age of 74. After a legendary high school career in International Falls, Minnesota, Huffer became a standout player at the University of Minnesota Duluth in the 1960s, putting that program on the hockey map. He captained the silver medal winning 1972 U.S. Olympic hockey team and concluded his playing career in the World Hockey Association with the Minnesota Fighting Saints. In 2005, Huffer was inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. At just 5 feet 6 and 155 pounds, Huffer Christensen was small in stature, but big in heart and talent. To help commemorate Huffer's career, we'll talk with three of his Olympic teammates. Right wing Tim Sheehy, center Henry Boucher, and goaltender Mike Lefty Curran. We'll learn about what made Huffer a special person and player, and we'll examine the strong bond that 1972 Olympic team still has today. Rest in peace, Huffer Christensen. Also a native of International Falls, Tim Sheehy was the co-captain of the 1972 U.S. Olympic Hockey Team and is also a member of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. He enjoyed a productive career in the World Hockey Association with the New England Whalers, Edmonton Oilers, and Birmingham Bulls. Tim pays tribute to Huffer and discusses the 1972 Olympic Hockey Team and its place in hockey history. Huffer... Uh came over to the International Falls uh, Minnesota High School program. I wanted to say he came over, he came over from Port Francis, Ontario. <clears throat> uh, we see there, it was freshman, sophomore year, I believe, in high school. So uh, he really gave the program a shot in the arm. Actually, uh, his cousin, Joey Balzen, had come a year or two before, and then Huffer's brother, Keno, came over. and they really uh, infused a lot of energy into the program there in International Falls and turned things around and of course eventually they won the state tournament uh, which is a major deal right. <laughs> in the state of Minnesota it's, uh, it's real hockey town but um, uh, Huffer was uh, was a terrific player um, I think everybody wanted to be like him uh, on the outdoor rinks they couldn't wait to go to the games or listen to the games on radio and um, he just uh, was a was a terrific player and person and as well as his his father ended up he was sharpening all the skates for our for the players mm -hmm. and both towns are right there on the Canadian border so um, it was a, a terrific place to grow up and um uh, Huffer gave us, uh, gave everybody uh, a lot of enthusiasm and uh, a lot of highlights during his time there. Tim, talk a little bit about that underdog 1972 U.S. Olympic hockey team. And of course, the U.S. won the gold medal in 1960, and then in 64 they didn't win, and uh, 78 they didn't win um, any medals at all. So. We, uh, in, in 69, we played, 1969, we played uh, in the world tournament against uh, the Russians, the, the, probably the greatest team ever assembled uh, in Stockholm. And uh, I think uh, Huffer and Mike Kern were, were playing a little bit in the, uh, uh, in the old USHL uh, hockey league right. at that time mm -hmm. so they they were they were working 
and playing games on the weekends and um, you know uh, like uh, Lou Nanny was involved in the league and uh, um, some uh, Oscar Malley there were a lot of uh, I think uh, one time Carl Wetzel a whole bunch of players played in that league um, and they really they added a lot um, uh, as you know, a lot of them were Americans, and then we went over to that tournament, and we got we got beat seventeen to two to open the tournament in wow. Stockholm. Mm-hmm. And then I think we lost again, like uh, nine to two. Uh, that was in '69 and in '71. Um, maybe we lost uh, ten to one and, and eight to two or something, and then in pro Japan I think we lost uh, 7-2 so you can't tell me that we didn't soften them up for uh, Herbie Herbie Brooks and that, <laughs> that 1980 team Absolutely. and Herbie was my old roommate so uh, we, um, we used to kid about that a lot this group just seemed to click with one another and most recently um, Huffer came out uh, this uh, this summer, I think it was uh, July or August, with his wife Evie, and uh, we've all stayed in touch with one another. And unfortunately, we've lost uh, 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 Frank Sanders and uh, Wally Oles, and, uh, and now, now Huffer. And um, it, it's it's difficult on on everybody uh, because we have been so close, but. Um, it was great to win, and I guess going through life, we've shared a lot of experiences. And the mm-hmm. fact that we won, you know, we did it with this group, and so it's it's special to all of us. And uh, it's so difficult to win a medal, and uh, we did it uh, as amateur players, exactly um, playing against the top Russian team that uh, beat the NHL the first game of that series seven to seven to three i believe right very good but that's 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 the team that we had to play against minnesota native henry boucher was a leading scorer on the 1972 olympic team and went on to a successful nhl career with the detroit red wings minnesota north stars and kansas city scouts as well as a brief wha stint with the minnesota fighting saints like huffer henry is a member of the u.s hockey hall of fame Henry discusses his friend Huffer Christensen, the 1972 U.S. Olympic team, and the importance of staying in contact with each other today. It was a huge loss uh, when I heard yesterday that Huffer had passed. Um, Huffer was a tremendous uh, role model for me. I was uh, 18 years old, I think, when I first played with the U.S. team when I was playing uh, junior hockey up in Western Canada and tried out and we played uh, in the World Championships over in Bucharest, Romania. And uh, Huffer uh, was a great leader, a small man with a big heart, uh, you know, he's very intelligent, uh, good family man and, and uh, a wonderful uh, uh, role model for me on the ice uh, as far as dissecting the game as a center iceman. And, and uh, you know his stature wasn't big, but he but he worked hard. He skated hard. He was a great playmaker out there. Picked up a lot of assists. He was uh, you know a true captain when you uh, uh, you know put an Olympic team together like we had uh, in 1972. Um, certainly uh, he was well respected, and you know he was vocal and and certainly uh, looked after everybody and and. Uh, uh, we totally followed him. It's always good to remember teammates, friends, uh, you know, family. You know, in my case, with uh, with Huffer as a '72 uh, Olympic team captain and his courageous fight against cancer, and and certainly, uh, you know, him touching all of our lives at one point or another throughout our not only our Olympic years but uh, thereafter. Especially in sad times like these, it's heartening to see that this group of players still stays close together all these years later. 
and, and we have, you know, we have some great uh, uh, teammates and, and players, uh, personalities that really blend it together well and kind of take the leadership of, uh, of making sure that we get together every couple of years. And, and uh, most of us try to make it down there some, some years, uh, different players and some years, all of us make it, but mm -hmm. uh, we usually end up, uh, you know, in the springtime, uh, end up somewhere where it's warm, either Florida or, or uh, Hawaii or something like that. And certainly we uh, uh, thank God for technology where we can uh, be friends on Facebook. We can, you know, uh, interact through our, our emails that, that are networked together and and we find out right away when something happens to one of us. And, and that sure holds true to, uh, you know, we uh, hearing about Hoffer and, and uh, knowing that he was in the hospital and, and uh, Evie, his wife, reaching out to all of the other players and wives as well. Few people knew Hoffer as well as Mike Lefty Kern, who was a teammate of Hoffer as a youth, an Olympian, and finally, as a pro in the World Hockey Association. Like Huffer and all of our guests, Lefty is a member of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, and he's considered to be one of the greatest netminders in U.S. hockey history. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great, a tremendous loss for all of us. Uh, Huffer was, uh, of course, our captain back in 72, and uh, he was also a teammate of mine back in 62, uh, uh, we won the state championship in high school, and uh, we've been uh, been together for many years. Uh, we're going to miss Huff. He was a special, he was a special player, uh, and a, and a, and a very very much uh, uh, a hockey uh, advocate and citizen of Duluth. He never left Duluth, and uh, uh, little man, uh, pound for pound, uh, <laughs> right. the best I've ever seen. Pound for pound, 150 pounds. Magical, magical on the ice. He and I actually played together when we were 15 years old uh, for the uh, Fort Francis Midget Program and uh, went to the championships of Northwestern Ontario and played in Thunder Bay. And those, back in those days, it was uh, Fort, Port Arthur and Fort William. Uh, and uh, we uh, lost in overtime, triple triple overtime to a team from the Thunder Bay area, and two of them went on to become NHLers and the best player on the ice in that tournament when 15-year-old midgets was uh, Huffer Christensen. He was very special. He's always a leader. He worked hard. He was feisty, and he was productive. And uh, as a high school player, uh, you know, size didn't matter as much. Uh, uh, he just owned the ice. Uh, he uh, every time he played, it was uh, he was performing a clinic. Uh, as we went on later in life, uh, his size uh, uh, kind of held him back a little bit. Uh, uh, instead of five foot five, five six. 150 pounds. Had he been 5'8 or 5'9, 175, he would have went right to the show. Mm -hmm. Tremendous, tremendous player. And by the way, Timmy, she uh, just missed Huffer and I as high school players. We graduated in '62, and uh, Huff, or, uh, Timmy was like a ninth grader or eighth grader then. So uh, the three of us played together from International Falls on that Olympic team, and that was very, very special. And Huff was our leader. We've uh, we've been talking about Huffer all this week. Uh, Tommy Miller from D.C. lives in Boston now. Uh, Dickie McGlynn from Medford. Uh, we were we were talking about reminiscing about Huffer this week. And uh, by the way, they're they're coming to the uh, the celebration of Huffer's life in uh, the deck in Duluth, which is an appropriate way to uh, to honor him. Uh, We've, we had we had several players from the uh, Boston area and from uh, New England uh, that you're probably aware of, Mark, and, uh, you know, uh, Robbie Fatorik, uh, the, the two gentlemen that I just mentioned, uh, 
uh, Stewie Irving. Uh, I'm going to leave some, and uh, forgive me for that. But there were there were probably eight or nine New England kids, as well as uh, as what, many of us from Minnesota, and of course little little uh, Marky Howe from uh, <laughs> from Michigan, who was 16 years old on that team. Right, magical. Uh, it was it was it was a uh, yeah. We weren't expected to do much, but we came home with silver and. I tell my tell my friends and I tell youngsters today that uh, silver can be gold someday. You know? <laughs> so don't worry about that. I tell them if you're second or third, sometimes it's wonderful. Again, your perspective of Hover is unique as you knew him at a very young age, right through the international experience, and of course, finally in the professional ranks, where he remained an effective player for the Minnesota Fighting Saints in the pro ranks. It must have been fun to uh, continue your. A relationship with him as a teammate and friend into the pros with the World Hockey Association. Uh, it, it was, and uh, we we uh, we used to smile and look at each other. And here we were later on, actually later on during our careers when all this occurred, we weren't we weren't 21 year olds when these were these things were happening. These were uh, in, into our late 20s, and uh, we used to uh, uh, comment on that and having. Play together. I've got some. I've got some color film right now uh, of a game in, in uh, against the Cleveland Crusaders uh, back in uh, back in '72 at the old St. Paul Civic Center, mm -hmm. where Huffer Huffer in overtime goes from center ice over the blue line, splits the defense, and, and dangles in on uh, on Cheevers. Right. Yes. And he and he slips it underneath him. This is WHA uh, uh, film that you could probably find somewhere. He's falling and he punches it under Cheesy and Cheesy's mad and everything else. <laughs> you know, it's funny uh, you every mentioned once that. Every so while I bring that out because I love to watch Huffer. Well, oh, it's Cheesy. great. You know, the funny thing is, is that I didn't, you know, I was just uh, a little bit on the young side when he was in, yeah. in it. So I didn't see a lot of Huffer Christians and highlights, but that WHA films clip was spectacular as you accurately you've seen, you've seen that Mark. yeah wonderful and you wonderful. You've, you accurately accurately described it and i'll try to uh, dig up that for our fans as well um yeah. but nonetheless mike we appreciate you taking Thank a you. few moments for today to pay tribute to your friend uh huffer christensen and we wish you the best of luck going forward hope we can talk to you again and we hope that you have a, a very special time at the at the ceremony next week and again thanks so much for spending time with us today Thank you for calling, Mark. All right. Take care. Bye, Mike. Yep. Bye now. Thank you for joining us on this tribute to Keith Huffer Christensen. Also want to extend our thank yous to Tim Sheehy, Henry Boucher, and Mike Kern for their contributions. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on the Pro Hockey Alumni Podcast.